Bonjour. And welcome to yet another episode with me in my garden. I am here in the hothouse. It's a little cooler now, thank goodness. Um, it was quite humid just a second ago. And um, what I wanted to do today is talk to you about something called saprophytes. Um, this is the name that I remember all the years like in my career and stuff so that's the word i'm going to go with it has changed to saprobes um or that's the the word that people are um more comfortable with uh because apparently the latinized version of saprophyte some scientists are in disagreement with that however i am also in disagreement with it so i'm going to go with saprophytes okay so what are saprophytes Saprophytes are organisms which do not make food or cannot make food uh, themselves. So they're like not like plants who use photosynthesis to make food. Saprophytes are a group of organisms. I have got some notes in front of me because I've been reading a good number of scientific articles um, doing the research for this episode to ensure that, number one, the information that I have in my mind is still relevant um, and because I know that this topic is, very little is known about this topic. Um, people haven't really studied this as intensively until recently and and it's ongoing so um forgive me if i if i do s just squeeze down um i'm just trying to also make this episode as uncomplicated as possible but the reason why i want to do this is because they're so super super damn important and i feel that in my everyday workings in the nursery um and just in my garden um in general I feel that they have a place and their place needs to be recognized because their place may just be or probably is as important as plants. Um, and with that said, let's get into it. So what is a saprophyte? I told you that a saprophyte is uh, an organism which is unable to produce food on its own. So they basically... Um, are decomposers they break down organic matter so they break down they're responsible for the breakdown of cellulose and trees branches fruit uh, compost you know fabric uh, humans use them for all kinds of things um, bread mold yeast uh, mushrooms uh, what else um, and mycorrhizal fungi of course um and then there are also, there are two recorded saprophytes, which are not, uh, they don't form part of the fungal family. They are actually plants. And one is an Indian pipe, um, and the other is a Corollariza, Corollariza orchid which uh, for the most part, they're, they're all native to North America. Um, and they, they actually don't photosynthesize. These are plants that flower that don't photosynthesize. They actually use um, the process of breaking down organic matter in order to do their, to do their, complete their life cycles. So, why did I want to do this? Because in my nursery, I've got the most stunning fungus called Acero rubro, which I wanted to show you um, today. And this fungus can be found in South Africa, uh, all the way into the tropics, uh, in some other countries as well. Uh, it has been found. And um, I think it's really, it's a very interesting little thing. And so I want us to take a look at this. So, um, usually people associate fungi with poisonous toadstools um, and your mushrooms that you eat on pizza, uh, but there are a lot of different applications of these things, and they are found 
everywhere in the world. And, and, and the reason why I said that they are so super important is if you think about it this way, the fires that happened in Australia, for example, it left many animals uh, dead, both uh, cattle or farm, farmed animals as well as wild animals. And the description I want to use the um, is basically when all these carcasses are lying in the felt or along the road or they've been gathered together or whatever, there are a myriad of different decom decomposing uh, insects that come to the fore to break down all of the flesh tissue uh, of all of these animals. And so one of the main guys is the fly. And flies in their larval stage are known as maggots. And maggots are disgusting <laughs> for the most part, but hey. So the role maggots play in that, in that incredibly efficient breakdown of flesh, the parallel of that in the saprophyte world is our fungus, or funguses, fungi. Um, and... And, and that's the, the comparison that I want to draw. So, you know, everyone goes, oh, well, I hate flies. I wish they didn't exist. Yeah, I hate flies too. I really do, actually. I've got a pet hate for them. Um, but I do realize the importance. And, you know, sometimes you've just got to, you just got to suck it up and deal with it. Um, and in the same way, fungi are very important because without them, You know, it's just incredible what they are capable of. They are parasitic versions of fungi. So you have uh, Ophiocordyceps. Ophiocordyceps is a a fungus, uh, a, a parasitic fungus, believe it or not, that uh, climbs into the tissue of insects. Um, they inhale it or they, they, they contract it somehow and it's very little still known about it. But what we do know is this fungus actually drives the ant crazy and a huge mushroom just suddenly comes out the side of the ant's head or the top of the ant's head um, and then the fruiting body. Um, and the fruiting body is basically the mushroom. So when you see a mushroom, that's technically a fruiting body. Um, and the the actual organism is generally a mycorrhizal fungi, not in every case. So all fruiting bodies are not the resultant effect of mycorrhizal fungi. And I know this all sounds really complicated. I'm going to show you what the different things are in a second. Um, so we'll recap that in, in just one second. But what I'm trying to do is not overcomplicated because this order, this kingdom of organisms can be really complicated because we don't know much about them. Okay, so it may very well be possible that there is a mammalian parasitic fungus. I hope there isn't because that'd be really scary to have. I mean, imagine you wake up one morning and you just have like mushrooms coming out the side of your face or something. That'd be really scary. Um, okay, so the basic ones are, are mushrooms moles, the corollariza uh, orchids, mycorrhizal fungi, uh, and the Indian pipe. Um, and so let's, let's just take a look at, at the morphology of, of the mycorrhizal fungi or mycelium. So mycelium is basically this. This is another type of, uh, there you can see mycelium, um, the hyphae, which are those tiny little filaments that you see. Um, and this is actually growing inside um, my wormery. So I knew that I'd find this here, and I just thought that I'd show you what this looks like too. So this is organic, this is, this is organic matter, so that, that they are in the process of breaking this down. Um, let's just see, there, uh, there, right, oh, it smells so good, guys, it smells so good, 
So if I lift this part, uh, let me just put that out of the way. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, a fungus. So you can actually see the filaments. all over this piece of of bark, this wood chip. And that, it smells really, really good. And there's one of the fruiting bodies. Let me just show you what the fruiting body looks like. There's a fruiting body. There's another one, another one right there. So you can see, um, there's one, and, and there's a little mushroom right there. So the mushroom is the actual fruiting body. So that is the... When the, when the organism goes into sexual reproduction, that is an example of the sexual reproduction. What this little creature is actually doing right now is it is running through the surface of all of these wood chips. And they are assimilating the cellulose inside this, breaking it down and making it available so plants can actually reabsorb this. They also have, they're known to have really good relationships with plants and trees especially, so much so that some plants can't actually live without them at all. Um, and it's believed that the plant species would actually go extinct if they, if, they, if they didn't have this. Or they increase the reach for water absorption. So a plant, let's say, would get to about... Um, maybe a meter away from where the plant is growing on its own root system. But with these guys, with the, my, with the mycelium, um, the mycelium create a relationship with plants and it actually furthers their nutrient uptake. So the mycelium is able to get into places that the plant uh, hasn't been able to, to reach. Um, and I think that that is why they are so important. They also are one of the most important decomposers in terms of breaking down this kind of material because plants you put the wood chips onto your soil the plants are unable to do anything with that until it gets decomposed and gets turned back into um, the good stuff so all of this um, gets broken down into into really um let's just see kind of like that it gets broken down into humus um, and then that gets mixed with soils and, and that sort of thing. And, and that's essentially what they are responsible for. So now let's take a look at the infamous Acero Rubra. So this here is Acero Rubra, or the star fungus, or the anemone fungus. And it smells really disgusting. Um, I can actually smell that right now. Um, so, basically, this is the fruiting body. Okay, so I will leave a link in the description if this really does interest you, and you can actually have a look at um, the intricacies of this family, because, like I said, there is a lot of information, um, and it can get really technical, and so... If I did, I would probably have to do a series on this and, and really just try and break it down. Um, but this is Acero rubra. It is native to South Africa and a few other countries, which I'll put up on screen. And how, th how this one works is you can see... So let me just point out. So this brown stuff that you see right there, which is really... It's wet and gooey. Okay, those are that. Those are the spores. So the, the 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 fungus will actually it smells really bad, like carrion um, or rotting flesh, and basically it draws insects, and the insects will sit and and feed and and get attracted to that, and they will carry those spores away with them, and wherever those spores, if conditions are good, those spores will erupt and they will start to grow, and and this is basically what they will turn into. So these are actually coming up in my very young clivia pots uh, because I, I had this uh, very big sort of chunky pine bark in here. 
um, and so then obviously also some other organic matter in there and you can see the older ones which have actually died away already those are about a day or two old they usually live for between 24 and 48 hours and then they begin to fade and you can see it sits on a stalk with a tube down the middle you can see it goes all the way down in there very beautiful little thing it's it really does stink so you you actually smell this before you see it and the rubra in the in the name actually refers to the color the acero uh, a part of it actually refers to uh, the basically the grossness of it um, so th this is a creature that lives underground and then it will rise to the surface and uh, and let me see if I can find some fruiting bodies and we can take one fruiting body out when it's still sealed and closed up and then we can open it up and have a look at what it looks like on the inside okay So here you can see that I've kind of started to cut it open and you can just about see the little, almost like a creature sleeping inside that. And uh, I'll just pop it out. And that's the sack in which it was sleeping, that little fungus. So there we can see the actual little guy. See the little arms curled up very nicely. I almost feel bad for it actually, that I took it out, but yeah, I think it's important that you guys get to see this. So this is, re these little guys are responsible for the breakdown of organic matter. So you see them in your garden, that is a good thing guys, this is a really good thing. Um, not just this variety, uh, any of them, any fruiting bodies you see coming up in your in your garden, it's generally a, a very good sign. Uh, these are coming up in all of my uh, clivia plants in the pots. Um, and that feels very strange. It's like... Um, it feels like flesh, actually. It feels... I don't know. It's very strange. That's the bottom. And that is the top. Okay, so let me let me also just show you some of the other fruiting bodies that are commonplace that you would actually find. So these here are also um, fruiting bodies, and these are the more well-known fruiting body. This is a mushroom. So, this is just growing in the lawn here at the nursery. Um, and you can see the beautiful gills on the underside. So, in the same way that brown you would find on, we found on Acero Rubra was brown and wet, here you'll actually have, if I just break this apart, in these gills you'll actually find the uh, spores. So the spores are actually sitting on those there. So they dry and they just get blown about uh, and insects will also come and, come and grab them. Very beautiful, very stunning, um, commonly overlooked, but super important as an organism. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is a saprophyte and there are many growing right here. Some more coming up there, some more there. Um, there, quite a few of them, and then one right by my boot, which has just opened up. And again, it's, it's, uh, it is a saprophyte. So this also came out of that same, a similar capsule, and it basically bursts open. Um, and then you can see part of the cap was actually there, um, and then the other part was actually on the top that's obviously come off so yeah guys I hope you like this video just remember the importance of saprophytes is they are responsible for breakdown of 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 material 
in in your garden so when you see them don't necessarily rip them out or think they're poisonous rather educate your kids about them or educate whoever it is that needs to be educated about them as opposed to ripping them up um, and losing that valuable breakdown of nutrients which makes uh, all of the compost and things that you put into your garden available to the plants roots um, and and foster those relationships between mycelium um, and and plants and in your garden so yeah that's me and I'm going so have a good one stay safe and I'll catch you in the next episode. Bye for now.